CataractCoach.com. Why do you like flip and chop so much? Well, the answer is, it's a really great technique for my patient population. This is a complete case shown start to finish. Here we go, beginning of the case. You can see there are some toric marks on the corneal epithelium. We're going to line up our toric lens with that. Here comes our paracinesis. Good draping, eyes in primary. Here comes some lidocaine with preservative free, of course, also with some phenylephrine, and that'll help keep the pupil um, dilated as well as give a little bit more anesthesia. Here comes our dispersive visqueous, get a good fill here across the eye. Now, we're gonna make our main incision here. Of course, I like a diamond. And so, in flip and chop, we need to have a sufficiently large capsular axis. You can't really do it with a four millimeter axis unless it's a super soft lens, like buttery soft, zero NS. So here, we'll make that incision, this is a two millimeter diamond, so we'll make it two and then slightly enlarge it, maybe to 2.2 or three, something like that. And now we'll get our rexes done. So again, here I'm gonna use my forceps that as you, know, as you know are marked off with little marks. Those marks are two and a half and five millimeters from the tip. So as we make the rex here, we can create that perfect five to five and a half millimeter rexes. So again, starting the rexes here, going around. Again, showing you the video start to finish. As you can see, I'm not in a rush. I just want this to be really beautiful. Now in my patient population, the cataracts are across the spectrum. A lot of patients have softer cataracts like this, where there's just a little bit of nucleosclerosis. Obviously, it's all washed out with the red reflex, but you'll see that later. But some patients have very dense cataracts too. So here's the hydrocession. Here's the trick. Look at this. Fluid wave, fluid wave, fluid wave, fluid wave. No, try the other side. And notice we're going with the cannula to the side, not across the nucleus. There the nucleus comes up. It's only partially propped out of the bag, just a little bit. Now I'll put an extra aliquot of viscoelastic dispersive agent right there just to protect that corneal epithelium in case we lost any with the hydrodynamic action. Here comes the phago probe and the chopper. High flow settings, high vacuum. So let's say 40 cc's a minute, at least 400 of vacuum. And then there we go, just chop and separate. You got two halves. Now these halves are, are relatively soft and easy. You can just aspirate these down and you don't have to even sub chop them into smaller pieces here. And you can see it's super efficient. Now, what I also like is we're away from the capsular bag. I don't want to risk breaking the capsular bag. So a patient like this where the character is relatively, relatively modest, the patient also has a good degree of hyperopia, plus 275 for distance. So this monofocal lens with a goal of emetropia is going to make this patient amazed and so happy. But look at that. That's just gone. The nucleus goes away instantly. And now let me tell you about Retina Rounds, our sister channel. So much great material, even for cataract surgeons like you and me. I really encourage you to check it out. And I promise you're going to love it. Now, going back here, here comes the eye probe. And we'll take out the lens cortex and clean this capsule bag real nicely. So again, I can't have that risk that the capsule is going to break from too much manipulation or I'm going to cause some zonulopathy from too much stress in the capsule bag. You've seen the patients who sometimes you'll do a let's say a divide and conquer, a stop and chop, or even a regular chop in the bag, and you're separating the two halves, and you're asking yourself, gosh, how much stress are we putting on the capsular bag and the zionor support, right? Think about it. So here now you have a nice, clean, empty capsular bag. We'll fill it up with our dis uh, cohesive viscoelastic, and let's polish up that capsule a little bit too. Now you may be thinking, wow, that rexus looks too big, but I'm going to show you it's not. Remember, this is a hyperopic eye. Consider that. So this is a, not a very large white-to-white. -white. And again, we measure that rex, so we know it's going to be good. So here's a capsule polisher. Just to clean off some of those lens epithelial cells. Even if it doesn't prevent any PCO, at first it looks pretty. And then more importantly, it reduces the inflammatory load, right? All those lens cells and lens proteins are kind of uh, going to cause an inflammatory response. Here comes our lens going in the capsular bag. Let's see we got. Single piece acrylic lens, a torque monofocal. There it is. Get that delivered nice and easy in the capsular bag. And again, this video is shown here in real time, unedited. And you can see it's a really efficient, efficient procedure. We're able to get this case done in a very short amount of time. Now we'll line up those toric marks on the, of the lens with the toric marks on the cornea. And once you'll see at the end of the case here, the rex will overlap 360, it'll be just great. Here, removing the viscoelastic from behind the optic, of course, that is important in a toric lens, especially because if you leave viscoelastic there, it acts as a lubricant and the toric lens can, you know, rotate out of position. So a little bit more capsule polish in there, take out that viscoelastic. Now let's get this lens with its final position dialed in here. Here you're using this as a chopper, FACO, the eye probes on position one, just for infusion. And you can see, look at that overlap. That's a beautiful rexus. Beautiful rexus here, nicely overlapping the optic for 360. Beautifully done, nicely centered too. And now we can call this a day. So beautiful case here. Again, I like to do flip and chop, not for every case. 
If I do 20 cases, maybe half or less would be flipping job. If there's a lot more nuclear density, I'll do something different. If it's a smaller eye or shallow anterior chamber, obviously, you're going to have a tougher time with this. In some cases, you'll make a smaller rexus, sometimes intentionally, right? If you're going to do a glaucoma procedure at the same time or the patient's going to have a phaco and then a vitrectomy soon after, you want to be able to have a, large, a smaller uh, rexus so that you really trap the IOL optic in the capsular bag. So in case you have things like a flattening AC from the glaucoma procedure or you have uh, pressure from the vitreous cavity from an air bubble, that's just not going to rock or move the lens out of position. There's some triamcinolone, a little bit of... Uh, if that goes a long way inside the eye, that's going to help really reduce the inflammation in the first couple of days. And then here's a small aliquot of preservative-free moxifloxacin. Squirt the rest on the cornea. Get the pressure where you like it. That's a pretty reasonable pressure. Now we'll just check these incisions and make sure they're completely sealed up. That was just some tetracaine, which, as you know, is hypotonic, so it causes a little focal osmosis. And that looks just fantastic. So, yeah, flip and chop. Try it if you'd like. If you don't want to, then don't. I don't mind. But I want you to learn all the techniques. And you can find them all on cataractcoach.com, your absolute favorite.